प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई हम्बल ओवे सेंसेस ऑल ग्लोरीज टू शिला प्रभुपात ऑल ग्लोरीज टू यू महाराज एंड ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज महाराज वी हैव नाउ ट्वेंटी फाइव डिवोटीज ऑनलाइन इफ इट्स ओके आई विल हैंड इट ओवर टू यू वैष्णव स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी पच्चारी ने निर्विशेष वैष्णवेभ्यो नम नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासरी गौर भक्तिविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. And so today we'll explore one verse. Actually, it's a series of five verses in the Shrimad Bhagavatam from the seventh canto, chapter eleven, verses eight through twelve. Can bring that up on the screen. <laughs> okay. Satyam dayam tapamu sau cham titiksa samudamanaha himsa brahmacharyam cha twagya swadhyaya arjavam santo samudrik seva. श्रवण ुष्यते Hey, whoop, don't go too high. The translation: These are the general principles to be followed by all human beings: truthfulness, mercy, austerity, observe, observing fasts on certain days of the month, bathing twice a day, tolerance, discrimination between right and wrong. Control of the mind, control of the senses, non-violence, celibacy, charity, reading of scripture, simplicity, satisfaction, rendering service to saintly persons, gradually taking leave of unnecessary engagements, observing the futility of the unnecessary activities of human society, remaining silent and grave and avoiding unnecessary talk, considering whether one is the body or the soul. distributing food equally to all of the entities both men and animals seeing every soul especially in the human form as part of the supreme lord hearing about the activities and instructions given by the supreme personality of godhead who is the shelter of the saintly persons 
chanting about these activities and instructions, always remembering these activities and instructions, trying to render service, performing worship, offering obeisances, becoming a servant, becoming a friend, and surrendering one's whole self. O oh, King Yudhisthira, these 30 qualifications must be acquired in the human form of life. Simply by acquiring these qualifications, one can satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Report by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In order that human beings be distinct from the animals, the great saint Narada recommends that every human being be educated in terms of the above mentioned 30 qualities. Nowadays, there is propaganda everywhere all over the world for a secular state, a state interested only in mundane activities. But if the citizens of the state are not educated in above mentioned good qualities, how can there be happiness? For example, if the total population is untruthful, how can the state be happy? Therefore, without consideration of one's belonging to a sectarian religion, whether Hindu, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, or Buddhist, or any other sect, everyone should be taught to become truthful. Similarly, everyone should be taught to be merciful, and everyone should observe fasting on certain days of the month. Everyone should bathe twice a day, cleanse his teeth and body externally, and cleanse his mind internally by remembering the holy name of the Lord. The Lord is one, whether one is Hindu, Muslim, or Krishna. Therefore, one should chant the holy name of the Lord regardless of the differences in linguistic pronunciation. Hmm, an interesting point. Also, everyone should be taught to very carefully not to discharge semen unnecessarily. This is very important for all human beings. If semen is not discharged unnecessarily, one becomes extremely strong in memory, determination, activity, and vitality of one's bodily energy. Everyone should be also taught to be simple in thought and feeling and satisfied in body and mind. These are the general qualifications of a human being. There's no question of a secular state or an ecclesiastical state. Unless one is educated in above mentioned 30 qualities, there cannot be any peace. Ultimately, it is recommended Shravanam Kirtanam Chasya Smarnam Mahatam Gatahe Sevadya Vadmatir Dasyam Sakim Atma Samarpanam. Everyone should be a devotee of the Lord because by becoming a devotee of the Lord, one automatically acquires the other qualities. Yes, yes, the bhakti or kinchina. Yes, the bhakti or bhagavati or kinchina. Swanar gurus tatra samastate sudaha. Ara bhavata skoto maha guna mano retaina sati dvayato bahi. In one who is, has inflicting devotional service to Krishna, all the good qualities of Krishna demigods are constantly, consistently manifest. However, he who has no devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead has no good qualification because he's engaged by mental concoction in the material existence, which is the external feature of the Lord. This verse is from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, 18th chapter, verse number 12. Our Krishna conscious movement, therefore, is, is all embracing. Human civilization should take it very seriously and practice it principles for the peace of the world. Okay, go down and bring up the first word again from the very beginning. Go down a little farther, not the not the translation, the verb word. Go up a little more right there. Stop right there. Don't go any farther. Whoa, you're going too far. Go down again. Just go where you were. Come on down where it says purport. That should be the top of the page, purport. Okay. 
Okay, whoop, don't move, don't move. Okay. So there was one very important here, everyone. Um, so this is the foundation for human civilization. You'll notice there are 30 qualities mentioned and 21 of them are characteristics and activities of the living being and the other nine are the angas or executional activities of devotional service, hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, serving the lotus feet, offering prayers, worshiping, becoming a friend and surrendering everything. You know, there's one point I wanted to pick out. So nowadays people are not taught qualities, characteristics, or if they are, they're taught these characteristics in order to achieve something material, something external. People are not educated in values and in a spiritual knowledge People, or in basic spiritual knowledge, the difference between the body and the soul. Uh, the whole society goes on based on the principle that I am this body and keeping the body comfortable, keeping the body fortified with material and amenities are the way that society sees progress in the, in the world. Um, all, all celebrations, whether they're religious or secular, centers around people um, enjoying their senses. There's, if there's any worship of the Supreme Lord, it's simply perfunctual or done as simply a ritual. But here it explains that it doesn't matter what particular sector of society one is involved in these 30 principles are for everyone. Here it says, Prabhupada she gives the understanding whether one is of the background of Hindu, Muslim or Christian or even Buddhist, one should chant the holy name of the Lord regardless of differences in linguistic pronunciation. So in other words, this applies to everyone. We chant Hare Krishna or the Maha Mantra. But if someone who is of a different faith practices worshiping of the Supreme Lord by chanting or glorifying the Lord by chanting his name, even though those prayers may be different, they are accepted by the Lord as glorification. So according to one's uh, what we say, upbringing, or one's social position, spiritual, not religious, not spiritual, but religious position, one may chant any of the names of God, but it has to be a name of God and not just some words that are spiritual, they have to include the names of the Lord. So it doesn't matter what the pronunciation is or what the names are, because God is one. Of course, we encourage people who are not religious, who don't focus on any particular type of, of worship to chant the holy names of Krishna. Because the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is non-sectarian. It cuts across all religious and ecclesiastical, secular, and any kind of boundaries that people have set up by arranging society in a certain way. Because 
uh, the name Krishna refers to that person who is all attractive. So God is attractive to the Hindus, the Muslims, the Christians, the Buddhists, whatever you're following is God remains all attractive. So the name for the name Krishna simply means all attractive. It's not a Hindu name, a Muslim name, a Christian name or any. It is a name which is universal and its definition simply is applicable for everyone and anyone because God by nature is uh, attractive. So therefore anyone can chant the Krishna Hare Krishna Maha Mantra but we don't force people to chant the names of God like we do, unless they don't have any name at all. Therefore, we encourage the chanting of the holy name in whatever language that people use. <laughs> Here we mentioned some of the qualities that are being mentioned here. You can go up to the purport now. I mean, to the translation. Bring up the translation. Okay. So here, these are the general principles to be followed by all human beings. So this is the basis of the Van Ashram system. In other words, these 21 qualities, the nine other ones are the activities of bhakti. Should be organized according Bana and Ashram. But today everything is topsy turvy, everything is mixed up. So we don't teach so much Bana and Ashram because we don't people cannot adopt that. That requires education. So here is where the education is. So when people are educated in these 21 qualities, um, truthfulness, mercy, austerity, bathing daily, twice, celibacy, tolerance, discrimination, um, all these 21 qualities that are mentioned here, then gradually people can start to understand through the educational process of these 21 qualities, what is their varna, or where they can serve society according to their actual intrinsic nature. Before it's mentioned in the Shachas, Kalo Sudra Sambhavan, that this age of Kali doesn't allow people to, by their birth, to have the qualifications according to their birthright. One has to develop these qualifications. Therefore, it says everyone is born a Sudra in this age although one may be born in a Brahmin or Kshatriya family, in order for those qualifications or qualities to manifest uh, what we say externally, then there has to be an educational process. So these 21 qualities are the principles that are meant for your education. Anything below these 21 qualities is somehow or other given the definition of animal life. In other words, human being, human life starts when one develops these 21 qualities. And spiritual life begins when one takes up one or more of the nine principles of bhakti. Um, tolerance, learning how to tolerate. We find ourselves every day learning how to tolerate or we're faced with situations that require tolerance. Tolerating uh, different differences between individuals when they're together. Tolerating the weather. Tolerating our particular uh, epidemic that is going on now. There's a tolerance. If, people, if when tolerance is low, happiness can never manifest. Tolerance is a very important quality and Lord Chaitanya has given it a principle of uh, elevation. One should be tolerant like a tree. Using that example, the tree is considered to be an example of tolerance 
in the highest form. The tree stands in icy cold weather in the winter time, in very hot scorching weather in the summertime. Um, animals uh, and birds come into the tree and use it for their home. The tree sometimes produces fruit people come and take. The tree gives shade in the winter time in the summertime and at the same time tolerates the sun. I had an experience when I was traveling and it was an interesting experience. There was a, uh, when I was traveling in the Midwest during the, the heart of winter time, when it was blistering cold with ice and snow, uh, I would see trees, these little small trees. Normally they stand next to each other but during this cold weather, they move. They, they, at least their branches move. And their branches, they wrap their branches around each other as a means to stay protected from the cold. Um, it's interesting because tree is a life also. There's a soul there. But its expression externally is hardly visible. But in this case, we were able to see something these smaller trees, how they actually mm, uh, exhibited, uh, you know, a form of for trying to protect themselves by wrapping themselves around other trees. Tolerance is a very important quality, and of course, a tree sometimes. A woodcutter comes along and cuts off the branches for firewood, and sometimes people cut the whole tree down to build their house. So, therefore, tolerance, as given by Lord Chaitanya, is meant to be an important quality that one has to develop. Otherwise, one cannot chant the holy names of the Lord. Um, we find that tolerance is a quality that continues to face us moment to moment in life. We have to tolerate our own body. Sometimes it gives us trouble. Uh, it doesn't want to cooperate, becomes tired, becomes uh, sickly, becomes, uh, you know, uh, afflicted by different things. So yeah, we tolerate our body, our mind many times also brings up certain things that we don't really need or want. We tolerate these by getting rid of them. So yeah, a life is based on the principle of tolerance. So it's given a very important uh, position within the qualities of a human being. Bathing twice a day, well, that might be difficult for some people, but one should take at least one bath a day. And of course, if one is using bag evacuating, one should bathe after evacuation and also change one's clothes. Or one should not bathe evacuate and then put the same clothes back on again that is considered to be moochy dirty um in the summertime bathing twice a day is quite normal for most people but in the winter time it may be a little difficult and if persons are sickly then there is some allowance for that but generally that that is the characteristic of the human being discriminating between right and wrong um, that's self-explanatory. This is right and this is wrong. This is acceptable. This is not acceptable. Controlling the mind, focusing the mind on devotional service on Krishna. Controlling the senses. The mind is the king of all senses and therefore if the mind is controlled, it brings the senses along. 
but sometimes the senses become so strong towards sense objects that it brings the mind with it and then the mind and the senses remain uncontrolled. So one has to practice uh, celibacy. Celibacy helps to control the mind and senses. Nonviolence helps to control the mind and senses. Becoming simple because it controls the mind and senses. Remaining satisfied in any situation helps to control the mind and senses. And of course, the activities of devotional service take one to the spiritual platform where the mind and senses are fully controlled by, the, by being engaged in service to the Lord and to his pure devotees. Rendering service to saintly persons is also very important. Uh, it says that Krishna says, he who says he's my devotee is not my devotee. The one who says he's the devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. Become the devotee of the Lord means to serve the Lord's pure devotees. And that's the best way to serve the Lord. And serving the Lord's saintly persons or pure devotees, one achieves the mercy of the Lord through that service. Gradually taking leave of un unnecessary engagements one has to see what is unnecessary and then eliminate that in life. <clears throat> um, we might find if we do that, take inventory and see what are our activities throughout the day. We might find that there are some which are not necessary. We just do it out of infatuation. We might do it just out of habit. We might do it because Everyone else is doing it. <laughs> and there's a, there's a story where um, it's called um, the story of blind faith. <laughs> um, it's an interesting story. I'll tell the story. Um, One man, he's walking along, he meets his friend. And his friend is dressed all in black. So we know in Vedic culture, if one dresses all in black, that indicates that someone dear to them has died. So uh, he says to his friend, why are you dressing in black? He said, oh, don't you know, Sargo is sink. Singh, Sargo Singh has died. Oh, really? Sargo Singh has died. And that's, that's terrible. So his friend, he puts on black. So he's walking. He meets the police chief. Police chief says, why are you wearing black? He said, you don't know? Sargo Singh has died. Police chief said, oh, that's terrible. So he puts on black. So now the mayor of the city notices that the police chief is wearing all you know, black and he asks him why. And he says to the mayor, don't you know Sargo Singh has died? Oh, Sargo Singh has died, that's terrible. So the mayor puts on black. Finally, after some time, the governor comes by, he sees the mayor dressed in black. He asks him, why are you dressing in black? Don't you know, Governor, Sargo Singh has died. And the governor says, well, who's Sargo Singh? The mayor says, hmm, I don't know. I'll have to ask the police chief. So he asks the police chief, and the police chief says, I don't know, I have to ask my friend. So he goes back to his friend, and he asks him, who's Sargo Singh? I don't know, I have to ask the person who, who told me. So he goes back to the person and says, Who's Sargo Singh? He said, oh, he was my donkey and he was very dear to me. So blind faith. <laughs> Some people sometimes, well, why do you do this? Well, my father did it. My mother did it. He did it. We all did it. Robert tells the story about 
one man he's preaching to one person who likes to drink. And he says, oh, you're drinking, huh? You're drinking, that's a sinful activity, don't you know? When you die, you'll go to hell. The man says, well, my father drinks. The person says, well, he'll go to hell. My mother, she drinks, she'll go to hell. My brother, he also drinks, he'll go to hell. He names all his friends and relatives who all, who all drink. And the person says, he'll go to hell. But then the man says, well, that's okay because we'll all be together again. So hell will be heaven. So this is, this is the mentality and people just do what everybody else does because they like, because it's fashionable. Nobody cares about the results. <laughs> Another one, this was, uh, this one was uh, taking leave of unnecessary engagements, observing the futility of unnecessary activities in human society. Uh, we can see sometimes if we observe people, we see how they're wasting their time in frivolous activities. They could be spending their time in something beneficial, something that will lift their consciousness towards the Supreme. So the benefit we get is that we will see, we can observe, well, yes, this activity is just a waste of time. I shouldn't be influenced by it. Remaining silent and grave. Uh, this is one of the characteristics of the mind. It's one of the austerities of the mind to, um, it says to speak when one should become, should be silent is a weakness. And to be silent when one should speak is a weakness. That's a, a saying. I think it's coming from the Chinese culture. To speak when one should remain silent is a weakness, and to remain silent when one should speak is a weakness. And grave, grave means thinking about philosophical or principles, uh, spiritual topics, thinking about the importance of life, meditating on the service to the Lord, gravity, is pretty much lost in this age. People are more inclined to activities. Remaining silent and grave is very little practice in this age. Avoiding unnecessary talk. There are so many kinds of unnecessary talks. Uh, uh, it's called prajalpa, talking about there's gossip, fault finding, blaspheming, speaking lies, uh, so many kinds of useless debates. Uh, just talking for the sake of talking. Sometimes it's understood when two people are in the same room, if they're silent, then there is a there is a strange atmosphere there. So when somebody has to talk in order to keep the atmosphere alive, but speak only when necessary, and while remaining silent, think about the Lord, think about devotional activities, thinking about whether one is the body of the soul. One should observe the activities of the body and, and see that the activities of the body are separate from me because I am the observer. The observer is consciousness. Consciousness is a symptom of the soul. So observing whether one is the body of the soul will under, help one understand that one is not the body, but is something different. Distributing food equally to all living beings, both men and animals. This is a regulative principles for those who live in Grihasta Ashram. If you live in a home with a wife and a husband and a family, you must daily distribute food to other living entities. When Prabhupada was on a morning walk with his devotees in one place, 
uh, one one grihasta devotee approached Prabhupada. Prabhupada stopped, and the devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, "What is the main business of a grihasta?" Prabhupada said, "The main business of a grihasta before you take your food, you go out." And you call, are there any hungry living entities? Are there any hungry living entities? Are there any hungry living entities? Three times. And if no one comes, then you can take your food. And so Prabhupada, this boy was a little confused by Prabhupada's answer. So he asked him again. Prabhupada answered in the same way and for a third time. So distributing food to other living entities helps one to become detached from the idea that this is my home, this is my food, this is my wife, this is my possession. Janasa moham yam maham mameti is the principle of I and mine, which keeps the conditioned soul locked into the idea that everything centers around me and what I have belongs to me. Okay. So one should practice uh, using everything in the service of the Lord, and then that way one will become free, slowly free from this attachment of I and mine. And of course, we, we skipped over nonviolence. Nonviolence means to not to cause harm to any living entity through, uh, through acts, through speech, through the mind, through the body, or through words, not to cause unnecessary disturbance to anyone in these three categories. Uh, celibacy, for brahmacharyas, strict celibacy, uh, no uh, activities with the opposite sex. Even there's one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam which describes there for a brahmacharya, there's eight ways to break celibacy. Uh, talking, planning, uh, associating, various types of activities. For the grihastas, the, the grihasta stays in association sometimes with his wife or her with her husband. So one has to remain strict and the principles that govern proper activities within that environment. And that is one of the four regulative principles. Uh, if one engages in activities only for the procreation of children, one is following the principle of celibacy. Like that. Reading of scripture, we all know the importance of that. Every day we should read. Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, or some of the books authored by His Divine Grace, and understand. And charity. Charity is one of the main principles, especially for Grihastas. Grihastas should give in charity regularly through to Vaishnavas, through to spiritual, pro, uh, spiritual projects or giving in, sometimes giving in charity to a needy organization is also acceptable if it has benefit. So giving in charity is very important. It says that there's three things you should never be satisfied with. You should never be satisfied with chanting the holy names. You should never be satisfied with uh, hearing the glories of the Lord, and you should never be satisfied with giving in charity. In other words, you can't do enough of those three. There's no limit on those three. One should always be enthusiastic to give charity, hear and chant the glories of the Lord. One should always be enthusiastic to chant the Hare Krishna of the Mantra. So these are some of the Qualities mentioned here as uh, qualities of the 
human beings, human life, human life is meant to be uh, interpreted or understood by these 21 qualities. And then, of course, the nine processes of bhakti are there to raise one to the platform of Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for such nice class, so many nice stories, and also like a lot of information which we all need to carry forward. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, you can uh, unmute yourself, ask now, or if you want me to read, uh, you can put it on chat window. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I uh, would appreciate if you can elaborate on this so I can understand this better. There is a verse in our scriptures, I can't remember, but Prabhupada mention, mentions this somewhere um, that the mantra that comes not from a sampradaya, does not yield uh, the, uh, the benefit or the outcome. So the mantra has to be coming from the sampradayas. And I, I tend to understand that sampradayas, we have got four sampradayas. And yet Prabhupada also says, and, and in this verse, that you chant the name of the God in the language which is known. So how to reconcile them? Uh, and do you get the benefits, the same benefits if you were chanting another name uh, compared to the Hare Krishna Mahamantra? Well, the, the principle that is being illustrated here is that once you chant the holy name of the Lord, and there are many names of the Lord, Nam Nam Akari Bahuda Nija Sarvisha Pista Tarpita Niyamita Smarane Makala. There are two classes of names for the Lord. There are this there are the uh, what we call primary names and secondary names. One should chant this verse that is mentioned from the Shikshastakam. Illustrates that one should chant the primary names of the Lord. The secondary names of the Lord denote his, his uh, activities in relationship to the material energy, such as Paramatma, Brahman, uh, Ishwara. These are all secondary names. If you chant God, 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 that's a secondary name because God simply means controller, supreme controller. So the primary names are recommended as the means for chanting. And these primary names are in relationship to his pure devotees, his activities, his, uh, his characteristics and qualities. So that's the distinction like that. So one has to see. Of course, Prabhupada in this verse is giving some leniency because people think, well, I have to chant Krishna. Therefore, uh, I'm not Hindu. I'm not Indian. So it's not for me. Well, this verse really, or the purport, tries to illustrate that, no, you can chant the name of God that you know within your religious tradition. But then we understand that the, 
that the different mantras do have more or less spiritual power. Some mantras have more spiritual power than others. The Maha Mantra is called Maha because it is the highest form of spiritual uh, energy. Why? Because there's no other names in the mantra than the names of the Lord. Hare Krishna and Rama. Even within the Vedic culture, you'll find there's mantras that glorify the Lord, but include other names in it as adjectives or pro, not pronouns, but verbs that connect the names. So they're mantras, but they're not Maha mantras because Maha means pure names of the Lord only. So there is, Prabhupada is just making a particular point for people in general on this, that just chant the holy name of the Lord, whatever your tradition is, and that brings you to the platform of human life. But there are gradations of names, and there are even in mantras are more powerful. Some mantras are more powerful than others. Thank you, Maharaj. Was that clear enough? Yes, yes, Maharaj. So I think it's better than not. Yes, general instructions. Um, it, yeah, it's a general instruction. It's, Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, good Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances on the Trishuli Prabhupada and Gosh Dear Holiness. Um, seeing this verse, uh, Guru Maharaj, um, I'm a little afraid that um, uh, I'm unable, I'm, I'm not able to do this, all these things in the in one lifetime. <laughs> so, I I beg your mercy, Guru Maharaj, um, to help me with this. If you're, if you're... These these are characteristics and qualities of the of human beings. Mm -hmm. So, but the nine process of bhakti are there. So if you if you execute one or many more of the nine process of bhakti, you have you elevate your consciousness in such a way that these other things start to manifest. That's illustrated mentioned in the purport also. By practicing bhakti, and then all good qualities. And Prabhupada makes that verse: "Yes, yasti bhakti bhagavati kinchina, sarvaganas tu sarvaganas tu nastu me sira, arava bhakto kuto mahagunan mano rote na sati dayato bahi." So Prabhupada makes illustrates this whole thing by saying, "Yeah, if you're engaged in devotional service, you have all good." qualities. But if you're engaged in devotional service and you're still uh, the practicing activities in the mode of passion, you will not get the full benefit of the execution of your devotional activities. Therefore, we have to gradually, as we make progress in devotional service, at the same time cultivate these qualities. And the power of one's devotional service helps one to easily ad ad develop these good qualities. So if I may ask, what are the ones you get stuck on? Um, I can't tell specifically, Guru Maharaj, but... Uh, um... You don't have to answer if you don't feel like. Yeah. But... As we mentioned, as you practice devotional service, these things develop.
Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, uh, for this wonderful class today. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and Prabhupada tells it just like it is according to Shastra. The whole idea of Krishna consciousness is not that we should we should think we're on the we're on the highest standard. We're not. Therefore, this knowledge is bringing us awareness of where we need to be. That's all. so we have to strive for these things that are required. That's all. Yeah, um, but Guru Maharaj. Um... As you were telling that uh, these are the qualities which are the foundation for Varnashrama system. Uh, but uh, like a neophyte like me, uh, get afraid after seeing all this list. It's a big list of <laughs> things to do. Um, so how to um, do that, Guru Maharaj? Like how to motivate um, ourselves? We're, uh, we're above Varnashram. We're, we're doing Daibi Varnashram. Varnashram is material. Hmm. But these are, the, in order to, this is to elevate human society to the standard where they can actually become human beings. <laughs> in other words, they're not even practicing spiritual life and they're not even practicing the qualities of a human being. So if they start to develop these qualities, even if they don't practice spiritual life, then they it says that they can please the supreme personality of Godhead, and then gradually they adopt some process of devotional service. So for us, this verse really means daibi banashram. That means we, by practicing these qualities and cultivating these qualities gradually. Uh, we start to understand through education and through practice what is our nature. When we understand our nature, then we can engage our nature directly in service to the Lord. And that is called Daivi Vanashram, spiritual Vanashram. There are four kinds of Vanashram. There's material Vanashram, there is... Uh, uh, it's, I can't remember the other two. There's four, four categories of Vanashram. But one is, only one is Daivi Vanashram. That's what we're interested in. We're not interested in, in becoming a Brahmana or a Kshatriya or a Vaishya. We're interested in serving the Lord according to how best we can serve. Because devotional service is on the spiritual platform. Yes, yeah. Is that a little bit? Are you feeling more relaxed now? <laughs> no, good matter. Sometimes I get into this uh, fear, but uh, hearing your classes daily, uh, that gives a lot of strength, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, if we emphasize the important chanting of the holy names of the Lord, everything will become clear. <laughs> Anyone else? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. Yes. Would you, could you please um, elaborate about distributing food evenly as a grihasta to, to, to everyone, to uh, human beings as well as animal? Yeah. As well as... Yeah, animals too. Animals are spiritual beings also. One should feed animals. They're everywhere. I, I mean, for instance, as a, um, here we are in, let's say it was not the pandemic, but uh, with this snow here and ice and freezing cold temperatures, is it, I mean, literally, 
I'm not going to be standing outside distributing for shot um, <laughs> It's 20 below. But we'll find some ants in your room and give them something to eat. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's, ants, there's ants, there's spiders, there's other living entities that are sometimes in the room. You can feed them also. And does this also mean, for instance, uh, if we visit a, a, a relative or someone who does not know about Krishna, just distributing prasadam to those people? Um, yeah, everyone, anyone. There's no discrimination on this principle. Any living being you can distribute prasadam to. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty easy. I just I just wanted a little clarification there, and in mm -hmm. terms of the bathing um twice a day um <clears throat> i i know many devotees who are very very strict and they i've never you know i've been with them for days on end and they bathe once a day and is that acceptable because i i was all that was also called to my attention you know like um you know you're bathing in the morning but how about in the evening and you know i i just honestly Thought that that's, that's that's the principle of the the quality of hygiene twice a day, but if you can't do it for health reasons or because the weather doesn't allow it, one should bathe at least once, twice a day. I mean, when its weather is warm, it's of the warmer season. It's more natural to bathe twice a day. Okay. I mean, do your best if people are sickly and they can't do it. That's, and Prabhupada also mentions that in one lecture, if you can't do it because of health reasons, then uh, at least once in the morning when you first get up. That's when we have to bathe when we first get up because at that time, sleeping uh, is a very uh, unclean activity. And the body uh, secretes a lot of its impurities while we're sleeping. So we're unclean when we're sleeping. So one has to bathe in the morning for sure. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, Please accept my humble obeisances of glories to Srila Prabhupada and to you. I have heard that um, if uh, we don't take shower uh, in the morning and before sleeping, or at least wash our feet in the evening, then uh, there could be some ghosts who could uh, enter our body or uh, something like that. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. If your feet are dirty and you go to bed at night, you're going to attract uh, lower living entities. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. That's one of the ways they come. They come, motive, dirtiness is the motive of ignorance. One should be so clean that even in your home, Anywhere in your home, you should not find any dirt or dust anywhere in any part of the house. Everything should be clean. Clothes should be clean. Everything should be spotless. Everything should be neat. Everything should be in its place. That's how the body lives. If you have too many things, it's hard. When we used to be in the ashram, when we would sleep on the floor with our sleeping bags, as soon as we would get up, we would roll our sleeping bag, put it in the corner, and we'd take a, a bucket and water and wash the area where we slept in. That was something we were trained in. That's amazing. Yeah, that was, yeah, we generally, we generally don't come up to the standard of proper cleanliness.
Prabhupada used the word revolutionary clean. <laughs> Cleanliness is in the mode of goodness. Dirtiness is in the mode of ignorance. Half clean is in the mode of ignorance and passion. The body by nature is, is dirty. It's just full of contaminations. Now we have perfumes and soaps and colognes and various types of ointments to, to cover the body over and so it appears to be nice. But the best, the best, the best form is water, soap and water, is to wash it regularly. Hare Krishna Maharaj, there is one question in the chat uh, where Jay Rade uh, Mataji asking uh, to add to Govardhan Lila Mataji question, can one adopt a pet and regularly feed that entity? Uh, well, dogs are not allowed inside. Usually in Vedic culture, dogs stay outside because dogs are by nature unclean. Um, if you're living in a temple, it's not possible to bring, to adopt a temple, pet into a temple, that's for sure. It's not recommended. Better to just find some living entity and feed it. You can always, you know, you can, if you cook, you distribute food to your family members and friends. That's considered distribution of foodstuffs. That's nice. Giving grains to birds. We generally don't throw food away. Sometimes we make it we have a place where animals can come and get some of the food that's that's left over. If you throw, if you have leftover food and you place it in a little, you know, green area, there are so many insects and, and so many insects and worms in that area, they'll get the benefit of the food. The reason why we can't come up to the, the standard of cleanliness is we have too much stuff, that's why. We, our houses are full of too many things. And therefore we, we remain unclean because over collecting is one of the principles of uncleanliness. Hey. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, just like uh, one question Maharaj, uh, so today like all these like five words, should I take that this is more for awareness, like what should be the best quality we should really aspire for, uh, we should be aware of and uh, our actual focus, prime focus should be on the nine devotional service and by like mercy when we are aware of and we are aspiring for other 21, 
maybe one day by krishna mercy we can achieve part of those quality is that the way we should try to take this maharaj not not exactly we practice devotional service but at the same time we try to cultivate these other qualities simultaneously practice tolerance practice simplicity practice giving and charity go through the list adopt some of them practice them but without devotional service they remain external thank you guru maharaj mm -hmm. thank you very much okay so there is no any other question in chat window uh, maharaj if it's okay we can close this call now yeah one should understand the importance of this these five verses they're very important in the practice of devotional service uh one senior devotee uh, he gave he was this was in hungary we were doing classes so every day we would take one of these principles and give a class on it and for 30 different days we did 30 different topics like that so you'll find that in each one of these 21 qualities along with the nine processes of devotional service there are many details and principles that can be awakened through discussion of these topics which could be very beneficial for our devotional life you'll find in the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam the qualities of a vaishnava the characteristics of a vaishnava the activities of a vaishnava are highly emphasized as the foundation for successful execution of devotional service as if we don't come to the mode of goodness we really can't practice devotional service effectively so all these qualities indicate the mode of goodness we can't practice devotional service from the mode of passion okay i guess that will be the conclusion so thank you very much i hope this was a little helpful it was a thank little you. strong for some of us but that's good because we need to see where we are and what we need to to adopt or what we need to get rid of in order to uh, move forward both in our social dealings and and our spiritual practice mara is there any like recording of those 30 classes that you mentioned like on all these topics separately yeah you have to contact the devotees in new rajadam in hungary sure because i when i was there i gave i gave one of the classes so you could find a uh, contact maybe radha krishna prabhu he is uh, he is one he is one of the leaders there i'm not sure who else is a leader there now things radha krishna prabhu he is i think he's a gbc member now uh he could probably direct you and who you could contact because they keep recordings of every class that they make and they archive everything so everything is archived everything is recorded Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj 
I, I may ask about, uh, about it, the devotees. Maybe I can uh, find these recordings. Yeah, Radhavi Nodini, she's from that Sangha. So she can help you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much. Welcome. I, I will ask and let you know. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you. So thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for giving your valuable time and your association this afternoon. Thank you very, very much. Also, thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Gurudev Jai Anantakoti Vishnu Brand Ki Jai